I had a two-part question I experimented with this season. One, if I grow Campari tomatoes, I usually get from the store during off-season, will they taste better if homegrown in my own garden? Two, and how similar are they really to my 4th of July tomatoes when grown side by side? Comparison, harvesting, slicing, cooking, review, all included in this video. But first, let's see what Campari looks and grows like before she actually arrives at the store. Hi guys, today is the 10th of May and I am going to plant this little Campari tomato. And obviously I grew this in a egg carton and it's so moist I didn't need scissors I just gently pulled that apart and then I pulled this one off this is the 4th of July which is going to be right next to it and to me when I see these in the grocery store they remind me of the 4th of July so I just wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison these are already going to be bigger I know that but I've never grown these I've just enjoyed them in the winter when I have no other option cover the leaves okay and I'm just gonna pat it in a little bit here a little bit there okay now it's in securely but I know that it's gonna have enough um, air in there hi guys today is June 10th I'm in Northwest Ohio I am in zone 5 Hi guys, it is June 26th today, and I am going to come out here, do a little bit of weeding. You can see back there, I need to do a little weeding back there. And look at doing maybe a little bit of pruning of the leaves. Um, I kind of thought this would be a little bit bigger, because this is in the best sun location back here. This spot and this spot are the best. Hey guys, today is July 1st and we are starting to get ourselves some blossoms on here. So that's looking very well, even though the plant is pretty short compared to the 4th of July. These are the ones that sort of remind me of the 4th of July, so I wanted to plant them side by side for a pretty fair comparison. And you can see the blooms on this one here. Okay, they look kind of small. They almost look a little bit like a cherry bloom, cherry tomato bloom. And the ones over here for the 4th of July are a little bit bigger. All right, not quite as open either. We're seeing a lot of yellow on this plant and not a lot of yellow on these blooms yet. That's okay, because if they're gonna be a little bit bigger, that makes sense. Hey guys, today is July 6th and we have started to develop some little teensy tiny tomatoes. Now if I take the 4th of July leaves out of here, that is a pretty little compact tomato to already have this size going. We've had two days of rain and they love it and the 4th of July is right next to it. So you can see how big that is, and you can see I've got some over here, but this is the biggest one back there. So yep, it's a little bit behind, plus this is more of a medium-sized tomato. This is a little bit on the smaller full-sized tomato, meaning it's not a cherry. You can slice it, put it on a sandwich. Check out my Etsy shop, T-Shirt Garden Company, featuring gardening, no mo may, sewing, tiny house, zen meditation designs, link in box below. Hey guys, today is July 13th. And I've got two fruit sets already developing and I've got a few more up here that are starting for us. It still seems to 
be a little bit on the flimsy side of a plant. I mean, even way down here, the stems seem to be a little bit flimsier. I need to push this back in. I don't know if I can without breaking it. I definitely am not going to do that with one hand. So I'm going to take two hands and maneuver it and see if I can't get that back in here for us. If not, I'm going to leave it out because I will break it. All right, you guys, now that's all in. And I really just took two hands, moved it all the way to the side, took the other hand, and delicately popped it underneath that. If you feel like you're going to break it, then just stop. It's the best thing to do. Hey guys, it is July 19th, and the fruit sets are looking quite well. They look like a, basically like a little sweet 100 here. Still a little wispy of a plant. And as I prune, I try and put them back into their cages. But we're doing good so far, guys. Doing good. I like to keep them trimmed, obviously. I want to grow the tomato and not the leaves. Okay, August 2nd. Our little Campari tomatoes starting to turn colors on us. So that's pretty fantastic. <laughs> Hey guys, August 6th, and these Campari tomatoes are finally starting to ripen up for us. They've got a little bit of a cush here. You know what? I'm making tacos today, so I'm going to go ahead. Oh, that lifted up so nice. I'm going to go ahead and take these so that I can use these. Um, it probably maybe would have needed another day for it to be like the perfect shade of red. But look at that. Hardly no top at all there. Yeah, look at that. So easy. I'm going to let those other oranges ones go ahead and continue to ripen on the vine. And... Rained, rain last night, and we need it. It's totally muggy out here. We've got more growth going, going up here at the tips. So, if you look at this though, considering that there's three stalks, this is kind of a desolate looking tomato. I would, ex I, would I really would have expected a little bit more. All right, guys, we're looking at these Campari tomatoes out here. And they're going to continue to come up here and give us some more fruit set. We have that terrible hot and humid week. I mean, it was unbearable. Therefore, there is a fungus out here. And that fungus looks like this here. And I have been out here severely trimming all of the tomatoes. It did not bother this gorgeous zucchini though. Now let's look at the size of these Camparis compared to the indigo cherry drops and the sweet 100s. August 30th and look at all of this color on this Campari tomato. Lovely. Gorgeous. August 11. I can see that something got one of these tomatoes and gave it a nice little sampling. Woo but look at the rest of our garden back here. Our zucchini, all of our tomato. We've got things fruiting up and changing for us. It's gonna be some good tomato sandwich eating. That's that Kroger tomato down there. Our artesian mix is starting to color. 
guys, look at how beautiful these blue beauties are starting to become. We've got peppers down here. Tomatoes and peppers are a fantastic combination together. Black crumbs, not start turning. These indigo cherries, I've eaten several and have gotten lots to give away. And I'm really, really digging this pergola looking system. It's giving me all kinds of ideas that I can think about for winter. So handy, so handy with my height. I like it spread out like this. I bought some tomatoes at Kroger and these are the homegrown ones that I did from when I saved these seeds in the spring from this Kamari tomato. These are tomatoes on the vine, which I found this out does not necessarily have to be Kamari. They actually just trademarked this name. This could also be a different tomato, like Magic Mountain, um, something in that series. So looking here, they still have the vines on them like you usually see. I absolutely love these in the winter when I can not grow anything since I am in zone five and I want a tomato sandwich or I want a salad. You, you know how it goes, whatever you want, whatever you crave with a tomato on it. Now, if we look at this one right here, these, this is mine. You can see it's got some imperfections on it. So let's look at that next to probably this biggest one. Look at that, same size. This one has to ripen a little bit more. This is another reason why I love these tomatoes in the winter is they will last a long time for you. You don't have to eat them the day that you bring them back. You've got it probably a good seven days for you to consume this. So it's kind of a nice little luxury in the winter that you can have these tomatoes on hand. Okay, so you've seen the shop before. I had myself a tomato sandwich. It was fantastic. It was like eating a tomato sandwich in the winter with these, okay? So what is my final verdict? Do I need to grow these myself again in my own garden? No. I really don't because I will have about nine months out of the year to enjoy these. I am going to take the space that this tomato took in my garden for something like a black creme or a purple Cherokee. Something that you just don't get that tastes that good in the grocery store and is that big. Plus, I like a good tomato sandwich with a good thick tomato one slicer. This is just to satisfy my tomato sandwich need and kind of hold it back until I can go out and grow what I need to grow. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with these. They taste fantastic. They taste just like these do. But what it does tell me is since I've grown these myself and I know what this tastes like homegrown, it actually confirms and reaffirms that I made a really good winter tomato choice at the grocery store, okay? That's actually, I think what it solidified for me is, I, I can't really go wrong with these in the winter, guys. Now let's see this in contrast. These are Sweet 100s. These are the Artesian Mix. This is the Blush series. See how gorgeous that is. You guys, you should watch that video. That is a fantastic video. And you can't get these at Kroger. Mm -mm. But look, like this is just a tinier one. Look at that in compared, comparison to that Artesian Mix. Hey guys, we are going to clean up some of these Campari tomatoes and also some of the Sweet 100s that I've got. So we're really just cleaning up what we have at this point. And you're going to choose your most ripest on the verge, you don't want to waste them kind of tomato. 
And let me show you what we're going to make. This right here, butter plus tomato, the most underrated combination ever. And it is with this guy right here on Sip and Feast, which I really love to watch. If you wanna make some fresh, easy Italian dishes, come and watch this guy. He is, he's, he's just easy. And you can see I've watched quite a bit of his stuff here. I wanna make this one as well, but today we're gonna to make this because I have all the ingredients and I have my own basil too. So I'm not gonna show you how to make it. That's his content, his recipe, whatever, where I got it from, but I'll let you know the final verdict. Okay, verdict, James was right. This is definitely delicious. So easy. I use the full amount of sauce, but half of the pop box of pasta, just because I like a lot of sauce. And honestly, I didn't want that much pasta. So I'm going to pair this with a couple different caprese salads. Again, using up the scraps from the garden. Um, I have my own basil here. This, you guys, you need to try it because it's sort of a non-recipe recipe. It's very kind of loose and forgiving and so simple. You're going to have all of these ingredients. It's so nice. It's so fresh. I had to resist the temptation to put garlic in this. It doesn't need it. You certainly could add some. You could add whatever you want, but I just wanted to make the base recipe of this today, and it is outstanding. It really clears up a lot of your bibs and bobs and scraps of tomato. So I think it's fantastic. Save the jar spaghetti for the winter and do this for the summer. Love it. That's how much it made. That is more than enough for two ladies lunch. Hey guys, it is November 14th and you can see that it is snowing. There is nothing happening out here. The beds are put to bed. So I had to buy some tomatoes. Um, this is one of those Campari tomatoes that we grew this year. And you can see just how nice and bright and red. And it has a really good feel. When you pick it up, it's nice and juicy. This is a Roma tomato. And you can see how white that now looks. It feels like it has some mealiness in it. There's the top to it. And then I also bought the tomatoes on the vine. And you can see how, I don't know, they look a little lackluster to me. Okay. Nice big top. They look white. They have that mealiness feel to them. They have some very thick walls. There's the Roma. There's the Campari. Look at the difference of how bright red this is throughout the whole entire piece of that tomato. And again, this is the top. We don't really need to cut the top out because it's so little. So like I said, I really feel like after I grew these myself, I know that I'm getting something that tastes really good from the grocery store. Like that's the best offering in my opinion. So those two flavorless. That little Campari tomato, it has flavor, even though I got it from Kroger. Same time, I got the rest of these. This is your best bet, in my opinion, if you want a nice, flavorful tomato in the winter for your salad. Okay, winter. We just survived that storm. No power outages, but look, really, growing those solidified that I was getting the best tomato option in the winter. Oh yeah, completely did that. Solidified. 
Thank you so much for watching and I invite you again to subscribe as I have been gardening for over 40 years and have a lot to teach, show, grow, review, experiment with, and my favorite, a specific variety everything deep dive. So let's try new things together, mix it up, and have a glorious day.